the head coaches that have failed that surprised you the most over the last, let's call it 10 or 15 years, who are they? The other night, I mentioned uh, Scott Frost, for example, is a really popular name. I put this out on Twitter earlier today, and a lot of you gave me some names that I agree with. So I wanted to roll with this a little bit deeper tonight. Tom Herman at Texas. You know, remember when Urban Meyer was still at Ohio State? Tom Herman was there. There were a lot of folks in college football that thought Tom Herman was actually the engine that made a lot of that run up there. Now, the closer you get to the Ohio State program, the more opinions people will have about that. I'm talking broad strokes. If you just took the general opinion of quote-unquote college football insiders, that's what a lot of folks thought. I always heard that. And so when he goes to Texas, I had two thoughts. Number one, oh, that's not good for Ohio State. Number two, great for Texas. Great for Texas. I thought they would lead the way and be innovators offensively. And he had four winning seasons there. Top 25 finisher three times, but they did not win a Big 12 title. They had eight losses to unranked teams. Not very good. He was 32 and 18 overall, but more so than anything that's, you know, listed on his Wikipedia page. Tom Herman didn't have the it factor that it takes to succeed at Texas. And frankly, I don't know if Sark does either. Now, I pull for him, but I don't know that Sark does either. Nick Saban's got it. Kirby Smart's got it. Those two could walk in there, and they would have what it takes to succeed there. It's basically having the ability and the willingness and the gravitas, and you can insert a few more adjectives, to walk in a room full of people worth way more than you, who were way older than you, who have been there longer than you and will be there long after you, who think they have forgotten more about Texas than you'll ever know. And you got to look them in the eye and say, my way is the right way, your way is the wrong way. You hired me for a reason. Sit down, shut up, let me do my job. And then you want respect from me? The results that I deliver. That's where the respect will come. That's where the return on the investment will come. Most folks can't do it. Tom Herman couldn't do it. It does not take that to succeed at every program. Texas is unique. It's a different animal. And it took that, and he didn't have that. Uh, Charlie Strong didn't have it. Sark, the jury is still out on Steve Sarkeesian there right now. That's why it's about so much more than just organizational structure and, and game day play calling and offensive design. Those things are important. But that it factor matters at Texas a lot more than most places. What about Will Muschamp at South Carolina? Not Florida. See, a lot of you said, oh, I'm surprised Will Muschamp failed at Florida. I was more surprised that it flopped at South Carolina. And I remember this because I was doing radio at the time. I remember how everyone would call in when South Carolina hired him and say, why are they hiring a failure? He's a proven failure, blah, blah, blah. Basically insinuating that what someone has been is what they automatically just always will be. And I don't believe that. I still don't believe that. It turns out that the South Carolina Will Muschamp era did not go much better than the Florida era. Uh, I just thought there would be lessons learned and applied. And the thing about failing is when you have failed and you get another shot, you have the least incentive possible to do it the same way you had done it. So I didn't know what way Will Muschamp was going to do it, but I didn't think he would try and duplicate a lot of what he did at Florida. Well, he was 28 and 30 in five seasons. They were fourth or worst in the East four out of those five seasons. So while I generally still believe in the principles that I just spoke and and I adhere to them, Will Muschamp ended up failing for some of the same reasons at South Carolina, and they ended up firing him for some of the same reasons that Florida fired him for. This next one, I got a lot of, and it was Justin Fuente at Virginia Tech. He had killed it at Memphis. He had gone 19 and six at Memphis, his final two years before they hired him in Blacksburg. And his first year was his best year. Jesse, how, how many games did they win? Ten games or something like that? They were a double-digit win team his first year there. So you think they're off to the races. Muschamp, I think either the first or second year, had his best season at South Carolina. Nine wins, I think. and They're off to the races. Progress is not linear. It's not. It does not always just steadily climb the mountain. Five wins, seven wins, nine wins. That's not always the way it happens. Sometimes... Sometimes that window closes on your fingers a lot faster than you think. And for Justin Fuente, he was 43 and 31 across six seasons there. He had 40 guys they lost to the portal. 
And that's before the portal was really the cool thing to do. That includes Hendon Hooker, by the way. So Tennessee folks, you want to send a thank you card, send it up to Justin Fuente, wherever he is right now. Send it to Virginia Tech. Uh, the ACC was wide open. It still kind of is. You, you, Clemson, grant you Clemson, but behind Clemson, the conference has just been wide open. And this is one of many stories that you can tell your kids one day about someone in a program that had an opportunity to do big things and there was just a wide open vacuum and they couldn't fill it. And while they were failing there, so had been Florida State. So too had been Miami. So too had been their neighbor in state, Virginia. Uh, virtually everyone in the Carolinas outside of Clemson. So the last one I'm not surprised by. I threw this last one in because a lot of you guys mentioned it. Uh, this one didn't surprise me. Kevin Sumlin at Arizona? You were surprised that he failed there? Why? I thought that he should have taken a year off, and he didn't. He got fired at Texas A&M, and then he went right to Arizona. And I, I looked at it, and I thought there was very little chance he was going to succeed. They went 5-7, and 4-8, and eight, and then he was 0-5 his first five games of the season. He got fired 9-20 and 20 overall. He lost his final 12 games. They got drugged by Arizona State 70-7 to seven in the final matchup. Most points allowed in the history of that series. I just think he needed time away. I think Mark Richt, I think the same thing about him when he went from Georgia to Miami immediately. Sumlin goes from A&M to Arizona immediately. You've got buyout money, and I'm not saying it's about the money, but just take a breath. Take a breath. And as I told you guys last week, and I'll always say, no one's stock decreases when they take a year off and they go do TV or something like that. No one's stock decreases. It only decreases when you lose. And he put himself in a pretty untenable position there, and it was, it was not made any better because he was there. But that didn't surprise me. Also, I got a lot of Rich Rodriguez at Michigan. That didn't surprise me because he didn't have organizational buy-in. Too many people up there did not want him. So I don't think he was ever set up to succeed. I'd love to know in an alternate universe. i just love to see a world where he, Rich Rodriguez, was to West Virginia what Kirk Ferentz has been at Iowa. He just stays there for, for a couple of decades. What would West Virginia have been? Because they've, they've never gotten back. And Rich Rodriguez has never gotten back. They were made for each other. And they, they just, well, it wasn't a they thing. It was a Rich Rodriguez thing. He, he had the Alabama job for 15 minutes and then backed out of it. And a guy named Nick Saban takes it instead. Just a little footnote there. And he gets the Michigan job, and half of Michigan doesn't want him, which begs the question, why in the world did they hire him? But that's its own separate book that has actually been written. Uh, but I was not surprised by that either. So a lot of the submissions we got did not surprise me, but some of these did surprise me. 